Hello, I'm Jeff Stelling and this is Football's Greatest Euros. Paul Merson is alongside me. Each week we've been discussing the games and the goals and the headlines from the tournament. Today, though, we're answering your questions about the Euros, about the Premier League, about whatever you like, to be absolutely honest. A welcome to Football's Greatest Euros. So, Merson, the Euros are all over. You're missing them? Not really. No, I'm not, as it goes. No. I, I am. I'm missing it oh, so really? much. No football on TV? Yeah, no. I've got no. to watch Love Island. Oh, no, no, no. No, I don't watch that. You don't watch Love Island? No. No, 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 It's no. got Joey Essex in this series. Oh, is it? Okay. I do like him as it goes. He's <laughs> a bit You're... more clueless than me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in fairness, if you watch this series of Love Island, you might not like him quite so much, oh, but okay. uh, not, not going to give too much more away. So, well, look, the Premier League's just around the corner, really, yeah. isn't it? So... Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So, yeah. away on holiday and then back for... For the uh, Premier League, which I can't wait for. Yeah, big kickoff is just around the corner. Look, um, thank you for all of your questions. We're going to plough through a few if we possibly can now. We're going to start with Brett Morton, um, who says, Hi, gents. First time we've been called gents, I yeah, think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think it's fair to say Declan Rice isn't a good enough footballer and overrated? I've heard pundits say he's world class, but what at? He's got no skill... No guile, no killer passes, and can't dictate a game like Rodney or Tony Cruz. Crikey, Brett, you wow. are not a Declan Rice fan, are you? That's a bit harsh, isn't it, Moose? Wow, Merce? cool, not many. Oh, uh, world class is a hard one because, you know, I, I, world class is used very loosely. World class is, as I said, like a Rodri, he gets in every team in the world. That's world class, in my opinion. I felt sorry for Declan Rice. I don't think he's a holding midfield player. I think he's one of the eights now. You know, when him and Odegaard play and it's Partey or Jorginho holding, I think he's a better player where he can burst forward. I I agree with him. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's he finds it hard in tight positions, but if he's running with the ball at pace, he gets his head up and he can pass a, a ball. You know, he's still a good player in my opinion. I just think he's played in the wrong position and... As I say, Rodri couldn't play as a holding midfield player in the way England play. Hmm. People will um, will have a go at me if they listen to Talk Sport because they know what I think of Declan Rice. I've had lots of texts saying, you know, does your wife know about your love affair with Declan Rice? Oh, no, he's and a good I, player. He, look, he's yeah. going to show his qualities when it comes to the next Premier League season. For me, that's no, for sure. No, 100%. No, 100%. As I said, if Rodri couldn't play as a holding midfield player for England, no one can. And that's the problem. So, no, the, he's better off charging forward he runs up he gets up the pitch with the ball he can find a pass yeah I, that that lad's a little bit harsh i'd like to go and watch that lad play one weekend if i can uh so brett look out for yeah paul merson coming and watching you play uh dean yowds has sent us a, a message about systems i think we know what the answer is going to be here but he says uh how vital mercer systems and tactics rather than individuals and moments in the game. Spain have shown that systems are more important than moments. You got to have you you got to have a system. You got to have a system. You got to work to a system. But then you got to have the X factor in the system. You got to have the X factor. You know, you got to have players that can produce something out of the ordinary. I didn't feel we had that with England. You know, I'm a massive Foden fan, and Bellingham's done great. But I, you're looking at them too. You know, Kane's not up to it. You could tell. You you know, when we're watching. So you're looking at them two for the X factor, you know, that's and they just didn't give us that X factor enough in games, you know, and then you got Maynard and Rice really got that X factor full stop without being horrible, do you know what I mean? So for me, we needed more X factor. And, and did Williams and, and Yamal provide the X factor for Spain then? 100%. But they got the ball out to them very quickly and they produced. Yeah, they were. that's why X Factor wins wins tournaments. Okay. Uh, Richard Kerry says, will others follow Ben White and walk away from England to focus on their club? Wow. I hope not. I, I think if Ben White was playing, he, he wouldn't have walked away. I think he looked at it and thought, well, I'm not going to play. You know, Walker's a shoe in when he plays there. You know, you got Reese James, who was thought, I'm unlucky not to go. So you're looking at them two players, and then all of a sudden, Ben White. No, I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. I hope that doesn't happen. I'm disappointed when Ben White done it, if I'm being honest. The lad's a good player. 
if you look now, he would have probably played. Would have played. Mm. I mean, and you wonder now with a change of regime whether he might have a change of heart and want to come back. Yeah, I mean, how old's Walker? I'm a big fan of Walker. He, what was he, 33? 32, I think. 32. Yeah. He's going to be 34 in the next World yeah. Cup. I know he's getting quicker and quicker, but, you know, another another one might come in and go, you know what, I bring Ben White back or ring him up and say, you come back. He's going to have Reese James. Before you know it, if we want to go to a free, you could play uh, Ben White in a free, and then you've got... Uh, you could play him at right back or you could play Reese James at right back or as a wing back. You know, we've we got that them options. But, you know, I don't know if the fans would have Ben White coming back. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, one of the things that Gareth Southgate deserves credit for is he's he's made England a side that people want to play for again. Because there have been plenty of occasions when people didn't want to turn up. And I mean, I'd ask you the question, you know, if there's a European Championships that takes a month or more away from your summer, you're a, a, a Premier League player. You haven't got much of a, a break. You're flat to the floor for the entire winter. So you're called up by England for a month for a European Championship and you think you have very little chance of playing. Mm. Would you be tempted to turn it down? Well, I, I went to the World Cup and never... and, ne and never I, The Euros I started in 92, but the World Cup, I, I was a squad player you just don't know what's going to happen in a tournament. You just don't know what's going to happen. You know, I got on in the end, you know, and then I score a penalty. Who knows if the next game kicks off and I'm playing. I, I go, you know what I mean? It, that's one thing that takes you to a different table. You know, you're talking to people you there and you go, I played in the World Cup. Played yeah. in the World Cup. It, take, it puts you on a different table. Don't, you know, that's the pinnacle of every player's career is to play at the World Cup. And for me... Ben White, it's a shame because the, the lad's a good player as well. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Walker, by the way, he runs like a 32-year-old. Oh, But wow. he's 34. He's 34? Yeah. So, wow. He runs runs like a 32-year-old. He runs like a 21-year-old. He runs like a quick 32-year-old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You didn't 30, see me run when I was 32. 30, <laughs> so, 34. Yeah, so I, I'd, be, I'd be shocked if he was at the next World Cup. I think it was. It would. I wouldn't have been shocked if Gareth was the manager. I would be shocked now. Okay, uh, Jordan DeRose, Merce, would your football career have been different if you'd played in the social media era? Uh, in what way? Yeah, because it's my choice if I want to read it. Mm. It's my choice. Yeah, you know, you got to remember. You, you surprised that so many players get themselves involved with social media? I'm not sure how many do it themselves. Yeah, I am surprised. I'm surprised how much they worry about what people say. You know, it's their choice. If they pick it up and they read it and they can take it, keep on keep on reading it, fair play to you. But people go, oh, you didn't play in social media time. I played when the papers were rife. I played when the papers were the papers and everybody read the papers. So you imagine you, you're playing on a Saturday and you, you get six out of ten and there's a reporter there who don't really like you. And he's giving you six out of ten, and you you weren't a six out of ten. You was a seven or an eight. But there's of course there's reporters that don't like you. You know, there's another seven million, eight, nine million people reading that on Monday morning and go, oh, Merson was shit again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's a different kind of of me. You know, it was a different kind. Everybody read the papers. You know, only people read your so your platform or whatever. So yeah. yeah, I don't. I that's my choice. I've never really. You know, sometimes I go on there and someone says something, I think, oh, and it, it, it hurts. It does. I'm not going to lie. But another day I read it and I just laugh. So, yeah, I think it's a choice. I, I don't really pay Yeah, attention. as you say, that the, the newspapers were read by absolutely everybody. Yeah. By the way, in those days as well, if you went to the Euros, and I'm sure it was the case then, that um, the, the, the media, you know, the news of the world or whatever, they wouldn't just send sports reporters, they sent news oh, yeah, reporters. Yeah. And all they were out to do, with all due respect, was to dig the dirt on players out there. It wasn't about the oh, football, and believe they, you and me. They, and they, and they'd hold stories back yeah. for the tournament. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the night before England's first game, oh. you know, scandal oh, published. I was writing for a paper. I was writing for a paper one day. Right? Like, I had a column with this paper. Many, many years ago. And the papers, that paper not round my house, yeah, with a story, front page story. Said you, Merson, sound so, sound so, sound. I said, they, and they named the paper and I went, I write for the paper. I, I have a column. They pay me to write for it. And they went, I don't care. I went, 
oh, I'm married with kids. And he went, I don't care. It's like fucking ruthless, <laughs> ruthless. But, you know, looking back now at the time, but, you know, I shouldn't have done what I'd done. But, yeah, it just shows mm. you that's what it was like. That's what it was like. Oh, look, you know, uh, as a sports journalist, I went on, on many trips, you know, to Olympic Games and World Athletics Championships and, and a whole host of others. And, and we as the sports, we sort of stuck together and we knew we knew who the sort of assassins with a typewriter were. Yeah. You know, we knew who the news reporters were. And, and in fairness, most of the athletes knew who the news reporters were and gave them a, a really wide berth. But they were they were difficult times if you were in the spotlight, that's mm. for sure. Coming soon, Football's Greatest Eras with Nicky Butt and Paul Scholes, a new show where the pair tell their best stories about Manchester United's greatest period. I'm Nicky Butt. And I'm Paul Scholes. This is our new show where we take you inside the greatest era under the greatest manager at the best club in the world. Come with us inside the dressing rooms and onto the pitch. I think I was the only person in Premier League history to score a goal <laughs> and run off and the camera go on Eric. <laughs> the camera go on Eric. As we tell you all about our teammates and the rivalries. I'm pretty sure that was a game where Robbie Fowler scored the goal, were you not? Gary yeah. off the ball. I mean, Nev, what's he doing? <laughs> I mean, I mean, we know Rob, he's a great lad, unbelievable player, but Nev's got just, what's Nev doing? I mean, he's just fell <laughs> he down like himself a, in that wrong position. He fell down it? like an 82-year-old on his inner frame. <laughs> this is football's greatest eras. Ronald Barker, Ronnie Barker, he uh -huh. can't be. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't be, he literally couldn't be. Uh, Ronald Barker asks, what do you do when you're taking a penalty and you know the keeper has it written on his back? bottle which way you usually go no one knew though did they no no one knew so yeah i i don't yeah i don't it's all right saying where you're going to go but you know it's at that moment do you know what i mean some of them now i mean the penalties now they wait for them to dive you know they're not allowed mm. off their line they're on their line it's a lot easier to score a penalty oh now. yes it's a lot easier you know when Tiz was taken and people like that, it was a lot harder. They'd run off their line. They'd be three yards off their line. So that means the, the angle's narrowed, narrowed. You know, now they've got to have their foot on the line. Now, it's impossible. I mean, the Tony one the other week when he didn't look at the ball and he hit, the goalkeeper went that way and he still couldn't get anywhere near it. You know, but if he, if he was allowed to come a foot off his line as he dived, he would have narrowed that angle and he would have saved that. He would have saved it. You, you know, when Pickford, for example, he, he's got those... The, the direction that, that the experts presume, yeah. you know, that the, the taker is going to shoot. When he when he puts that down, why doesn't the opposition goalkeeper just go and grab it and throw it in the crowd on his bottle? Yeah, I don't know. You know? Yeah, no, I, no, I don't. But I mean, there's gamesmanship from one side, so surely gamesmanship from the other side is yeah. allowed as well. And to be fair, that, that's where it is harder now, is coming up with solutions, because there's so much video so many videos and what foot they go on and what they do, what's their movement and the video. So it is harder for the players in that way yeah. to keep on coming up with different, different like solutions to, to become a better player. Yeah. Well, my son Matt went to do work experience at Norwich City and he spent one week, one entire week, watching every penalty that had been taken in the Premier League over the last 10 years and logging wow, yeah. which direction, which heights, you know, the, the player had taken. I yeah. mean, it was painstaking work, but I, I guess, yeah. Yeah. you know, would have results. Uh, John in Wood Green said, Ian Wright recently said about Merce that he was the first person that surprised him by how good he was in training. And it made him realise the level he needed to reach at Arsenal. What does Merce remember from Wrighty in training when he first arrived? Uh, his enthusiasm, his, his love for the game. He, he, he just, when he come in, he just, took the training to another level because he he like he just loved football. He just loved it. Obviously coming in late. But he he ev he was a prime example for every kid. He he lived in the moment every day coming to training. He was never thinking about what he was going to do tomorrow or after training. He literally and any goal he scored in training, you'd have thought he'd just scored against Tottenham at White Hart Lane. <laughs> he celebrated on his knees. He'd celebrate. Yeah, I couldn't talk highly enough of him. W was it clear he was going to make it right to the top? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was good. He made, he, he made my job easy. My job is easy. You know, I could pass the ball. But, again, I go back to, like, Foden and Bellingham. That was my position. 
you need movement. You need movement. Ian Wright, you know, he just made that move. He he didn't look. He when we me or Burkat or Dennis would find him, but it was easy. I would have never got a kick if if he kept on coming short. You know, because I wasn't one of them players. So it, it, you know, as a centre forward, it, it's the same. Your owner as good as a player you're you're giving it to, and their owner as good as the player who's giving them it. You know, so for me, yeah, right, it was amazing. Mm. Um, Kim from Derby. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Merce. Love the show. Oh, this is another one of those is it true questions. Right. You know, is it true you ask Kylie Minogue out on a date? That right. sort of thing. Yeah. It's not not quite so intriguing. Um, so, Merce, is it true you once asked John Hartson to give you a whack in training so you could get to a horse race, but he ended up putting you out for months? Yeah. You know what? There's there's one even more recent than that. There was a lad called Jamie Lawrence at, uh, at uh, Walsall. So we was at Walsall. Great lad, Jamie. Great lad. So we're training on a Friday and the, the gaffer's named the team and I'm sub. Sub for fucking Walsall. So I'm sub. So we're having this practice game. So before the practice game, I said to Jamie, do us a favour. Just... When I get the ball, just come and slide in, and I'll 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 go over, and I, I'm not going to the game. I'm not being sub, no chance. So we're playing in this game, and five minutes gone, ten minutes. And when you're playing a, a game of shape against the the team that are playing, you don't know when it's going to stop. It could be five minutes, it could be ten, it could go on for an hour if it ain't working. So I'm thinking he needs to hurry up here because otherwise I'm on this coach for three hours wherever we're going. Then all of a sudden, I'm running down the wing. He comes flying from nowhere, smashes me. And I mean smashes me. He was hard as nails. And he put me out for three months. No. And he leaned over me. Went, Is that all right, Merce? And I was like, you fucking, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I did say it to John as well. I There was a horse run at Newmarket. And I wanted, yeah, I wasn't playing. Yeah. So I said to him, do me a favour. Give us a smash. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did the horse win? Yeah, that's so why I'm sitting here fucking on a podcast <laughs> on a fucking <laughs> Tuesday. Brilliant. By the way, your attitude to being sub has changed because I know, you know, you you weren't too worried when you were sub on a Sunday morning at Wormwood Scrubs for Sunday team, were you? Oh, no, you still yeah, but I was, I was, yeah, because I knew we were all going out after. And that's the only reason. That's the only reason I played Sunday morning football. As soon as everybody stopped going out, I stopped playing. Yeah. Liam from Suffolk. Uh, this is an easy one. Who's the greatest coach never to be England manager? Would it be Harry Redknapp? I got to go Harry Redknapp. I've got to go Harry. Yeah, my, yeah. How he never got the England job. Him is it too late now? I would probably say now. Yeah, I would pr probably say now. Him and Brian Clough. Yeah, should have been should have managed England mm. definitely. Uh, Warren from Portsmouth. Um, you played with both Eddie Howe and Gary O'Neill uh, at Portsmouth. Are they the two best English managers out there at the moment? I played with Gary O'Neill. I played with Gary a lot. I played mm. with Eddie Howe for two, minutes. two why, minutes. Why two minutes? We made his debut. We made his debut. We both made our debut against Nottingham Forest, first game of the season. And he, I think it was his, he snapped his Achilles in two minutes. Oh. Never played. I don't think he ever played again. Well, he never played that season. I was only there one year. I've seen both of them. I've been to the training ground. I was at Bournemouth when Eddie was there and I went to Wolves the other week. Uh, See Gary, they're very good. Both of them are very good, very good. Yeah, I just think the experience at the moment of not playing for England puts me towards Frank Lampard. Yeah, for the England manager's yeah. job, even even though he's not a yeah, current manager, he's two, got that managerial two are, record. Two are very good managers. You're very. talking about good English managers, but Sean Dyche, you know, may not be everybody's you know favorite style of football, but he's got to be up there as amongst the best English managers. Yeah, I feel sorry for Sean because Sean's had to work with what he's worked with and cut his cloth accordingly. I'd like to see Sean at a, one of the top teams because I think he would be able to do it. I think people have this myth: oh, four four two, you know, hard to beat. Uh, but every club he's been to, that's how it's had to be. You know, he hasn't had the fortune of managing one of the big boys, you know, and I don't mean that disrespect to Everton because they are a big club, but they haven't got big players. So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm a Sean Dyche fan. I don't see Pep Guardiola and Klopp and players, tip managers like that who we're talking about the greatest in the world being able to do the jobs he's done at Burnley and Everton. Yeah. 
Do you feel that to be the manager of a big club, he has to make Everton a big club because none of the big boys are going to come along and offer him a job? Well, this is the problem. He's got into that sort of, that certain way of playing, but he only plays that way because I think he's amazing where it's not him. He plays for the club. He he manages for the club and to make sure a club's not going to get relegated. You know, I put it on the other side of Vincent Company. Vincent Company's manager of Bayern Munich now, but Burnley got relegated. Yeah, makes you scratch your head a bit. Yeah. Now, if he'd have kept Burnley up, he wouldn't have been manager of Bayern Munich because yeah. he'd have had to have played a way to keep Burnley up, but he didn't. He played a way to get himself a better job. Right. So and that's why selfish Sean, then. I mean, you've got to say that, and that's why Sean Dyche is unbelievable and doesn't get the credit he deserves because he doesn't think of himself. He thinks I've got to keep this team in the Premier League. He doesn't think I'm going to play the way that everybody's going to go, oh, my God, look at the way he plays, Sean. Look at the way they roll it out from the back. But they don't win a football match. Mm, yeah. And that's where Sean Dyche is unlucky. Uh, no, and it doesn't matter, but brilliant bloke, yeah. as it happens as well. Uh, Kate and Croydon, who's going to be the surprise package of the Premier League next year? Could it be Crystal Palace? And can Villa stay up there again? I think Villa will find it hard with the, uh, with the Champions League. I think, you know, we see that with Newcastle. You know, we take it for granted when teams like Man City and Liverpool keep on producing year in, year out in it. Anana to get Anana Villa, good signing, good signing, big pitch, like loads of energy. They won't be far off because of the manager. The manager's a phenomenal manager, phenomenal manager. You know, he's the reason, you know, I see when Ollie Watkins scored the other week and they're interviewing the under fives coach and the janitor and everybody like that, you know, it all comes down to Uri Emery in my, in my mm. opinion. It all comes down to him. He's got him from running outside to in and not inside to out anymore. And that's why he is where he is. And I think Villa will be top six. My package next season will be, I think one of the, one of the three will stay up. I don't know what one, but I think one of them will stay up. One of the three newly promoted yeah. sides, yeah. Will yeah. stay up. What about Palace then? I mean, Kate no. asks about Palace. What? I mean, obviously they've lost yeah. to Lise. They're probably yeah. going to lose Mark Gahey. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. I, and then that's that's a big miss. Big miss. That's like you saying to me, will Arsenal win the league next season? But I'm taking Saliba out the team and Odegaard out. No chance. Zilcho chance. And that's why them two players... You know, and as they might go, do you know who to say Walton won't go? No, I He's don't. He's only I, just got there. Yeah, but I don't. I don't see. It. I don't give them a chance. I don't. No, I think they're. I think okay. they're up for a struggle next season. I, I think. I think Alicia and Eze play as a pair. I think they come as a pair. I think they're a pair of shoes. I mean, they fit each other perfect, and they work off each other. And it's hard to pick two of them up now. As owning him, he won't be that hard to pick up. They'll double up on him. You couldn't double up on him before. Double up on him. They move. He's clever enough to move the ball quickly to uh, Walton. Walton, don't mess about. And he passed it out quick the other side. And before you know it, they got an overload. Yeah, I don't see that with Palace next season. Um, sorry, Kate. That's probably not the answer you sorry. wanted. Yeah, Kate. Yeah. A uh, couple more. Uh, David from Manchester. What do you think about the Dutch revolution at Manchester United? Two new Dutch assistants, a goalkeeper coach, and their first summing signing is Josh Zerksy, Dutch striker. They're also in, of course, for uh, Matthias de Ligt as well, Dutch defender. Is that a good plan or a recipe for disaster? I'm going to go with B. I'm going mm. to go with disaster. I, I am. I think we, we keep on going back to the Dutch and, the, you know, we have this... The Johan Cruyff thing, and it was when Johan Cruyff, Johan Cruyff changed football, you know, phenomenal man, God bless him. What a player, what a coach. Every, you know, you've only got to talk what he'd done at Barcelona. You hear Pep Guardiola, amazing. Still living in that. Still living in that. Who comes over, very rarely, if, how many people we've seen score 30, 40 goals in the Dutch league come over and can't score a goal? And, you know, the lad Van, Van der uh, who just left now. Van der, I forget his name. He did, played about four games for... Yeah, from Manchester Van United. From, yeah, Donny Van der Beek. Van der Beek. Yeah. Come over, gone. You know, the lad did it. Done well at, at, at Ajax. Dominant team. Dominant team. Mm -hmm. Sits at the back. Bayern Munich are getting rid of him. Yeah. You know, he's... Well, uh, Valt Weghorst plays ahead of Josh Zerksy for the Dutch. 
Well, I watched that Zertzi. I mean, I didn't see a lot of him, but he come on the other day, and I don't know if he was just trying to prove himself, but it was 100 mile an hour. It was like he was chasing himself to play Bologna. Yeah, 11 goals for Bologna last Bologna, season. Yeah, he's, not, he's not playing at a standard where, you know, he's playing, he's playing for a club that everybody goes and has a go at. You know, I can't imagine AC Milan turning up at Bologna and playing 10 behind the ball. Do you know what I mean? I can't imagine anybody, even the lesser teams, will go there and think, well, we can nick something. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure about that. You know, have to get in front of the eight the eight ball. You know, the one thing at Man United, you've got to start well. You start badly, you're up against it. Pressure is on him because the manager's under pressure. Now, all of a sudden, he's putting severe pressure on this kid to perform. I hope he does. But for me, we keep on talking about the Dutch way of playing, this and that. What have, what have Holland done in the last... God knows how long. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, it's interesting that Zerkse barely gets a minute for them at the moment, and, and Delic, yeah, couldn't get in the side either at, at the Euros. But yeah, but and, nor, nor could what's the name, nor can the Tottenham said. Yeah, Van der Ven couldn't who's either. The best. Yeah, I mean, you do or get the feeling that um, it, it's a bit of a cocoon for Eric Ten Hag surrounding himself, and I'm not blaming him yeah, for doing, no, no, surrounding yeah. himself with his, his, his fellow countrymen, you know? You know what, he's a good shout in a way. It's like, I'm, I'll, I'll do it my way now and we've, we've found my way. Yeah. Yeah, and f yeah, fair play. Well, yeah. good luck to him, absolutely. Yeah, good luck. Uh, Tom from Heswell, um, probably going to be the last question, I think. What expectations should Liverpool fans have about Arnie Slot this season? Is a title challenge too much to hope for in his first season? And I'll tell you what, I spent four hours this morning with Phil Thompson and he's already Arnie Slot's number one fan. It's going to... It's, in time, it's been proven it doesn't work. You know, we've seen it with Wenger, we've seen it with Sir Alex Ferguson, then two managers went, no, he didn't come, you know, didn't didn't happen for that year. All comes down to the players. It have nothing to do with this manager. It's all Although down another to the Dutch manager, by the way. Just yeah, but Liverpool play a certain way. Yeah. They play at an high tempo. They play, you know, they don't play like a lot of other teams. You know, they go and close down. They play a like, lot big tempo. The way they play, the fullbacks get bombing forward, the midfield free. It's it's good the way they play. If them players go and keep on doing that and don't get lazy, they will be a success and they will definitely be up there next season 100%. They've got too many good players. But it only needs one of them players to get lazy, just one. And as soon as one of them players gets lazy on the press, teams will go through them like a knife through butter and then they'll have, they'll, it'll, it'll be a struggle. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting season. He loves to play with wingers by all accounts. And obviously at the moment they've got uh, Diaz and they've got Gakpo who had a, a, a good Euros and they've got Mo Salah and they've been linked with Anthony Gordon as well. I, I guess, I mean, just to round things off, their issue might be at the other end of the, the field where Virgil van Dijk has said he wants time to consider his future at international and club level. Now, if they were to lose Van Dyke, who's yeah. in the final year of his contract, that would be a big blow. Oh, end of, end of. Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce for the defender, Rolls Royce, phenomenal defender. They would have got beat by Turkey if he wasn't playing. You know, I thought he was outstanding that day. You know, he was up against it. The lad playing against him was a handful. He's a Rolls Royce if he left. It's like Arsenal. If Arsenal lost Saliba, who I'd probably say was the player, of the, the defender of the tournament, in my opinion, I thought he was amazing. I, I, I would say no chance, no chance. So, and this is what the manager's up against. Just one little thing like that, which is massive, one player, then all of a sudden you become a bad manager and he ain't a bad manager. But he'll be down to the players. Okay. Start of a new season coming up. How's your luck? National League fixtures are out. Hartley Bulls' first game is their longest away trip of the entire season at Yeovil oh. with all the traffic heading for holidays in the southwest. Oh. That'll be a lot of fun. Oh. It'll be great coming back, though, with three points. Long way if you don't. And that's it for today's Football's Greatest Euros. And in fact, that was the last one of the series. Merce, it has been an absolute pleasure to be working alongside you once again, mate. Our thanks to everyone who has been watching and listening, of course. Football's Greatest Euros is a folding pocket production with BBC Studios.